Alexandra. Hello. Okay, we are beginning. Is going to speak about uh, the Rock Your Rainbow building and uh, open source spectrometer. Yeah. Yeah. It's a project. <laughs> okay. So please give him a round of applause, please. <laughs> Thank you. So today I'm Alessandro Volpato. I am a bio innovator and uh, I'm based uh, in Berlin, Germany. And I'm working on uh, do it yourself projects and uh, open software in order to um, democratize uh, research. So everybody can do research, biological research at home, and uh, improve uh, answer to questions about health and, uh, and simple bio and environmental questions or whatever. And it's uh, possible to do with a simple spectrometer or other equipment. So we are actually experimenting with our uh, own build equipment. And uh, we are increasing uh, the community of people who are doing that. And uh, now we are uh, we have reached the point that uh, we need uh, a platform where to share this data and share the projects and uh, understand how to cooperate. Because there is a lot of people involved and uh, it goes uh, crazy. So what's the motivation? Why did I run this project that is Rock Your Rainbow? It's called Rock Your Rainbow because it's like we analyze the rainbows, how we will see later. So we are building uh, actually this platform to standardize the results that uh, people can get at home. And uh, this is the prototype of uh, a working prototype of this technology. It's the open drop of, uh, from Gaudi Labs. And uh, it's uh, completely open source. You can find it uh, under the Gaudi, Gaudi Labs, of course, and it's uh, on sale as well. And on this surface, you are able to move droplets by changing electrical fields uh, uh, around the squares of, of the droplet. But uh, let's say that's another story. <laughs> and uh, uh, on top of that, uh, we want to build a spectrometer to add uh, some uh, chemical, biochemical analysis. So. We want to integrate uh, this, uh, a modular spectrometer. And uh, we had to build a spectrometer. And actually, a spectrometer that is, uh, can work uh, alone and can work with this device and can be built everywhere in the world, be open source. So it's more, it's not a thing, but it's a platform, this spectrometer. Because uh, people can cooperate. It doesn't matter which device you use it to, to make it work. but. Uh, Everybody can do it and uh, with the same procedures. So we can, at the very end, share the lab procedures and the results. And it's something great uh, that's happening uh, in the future. What is spectrophotometry? So it's great. It's just uh, taking the light, uh, splitting uh, it uh, uh, through a prism. And so you will see the whole rainbow. And then we analyze this rainbow. How do we analyze it? So we check which uh, colors there are and uh, which intensity. This is used for, so which color is used to pattern, uh, to give uh, the molecules a pattern and to check which molecule there is. And the light intensity is calculated through the light that is absorbed by this uh, chemical. And uh, you can quantify how much of your chemical is inside uh, your uh, sample. So it's great. And uh, an example of, uh, of this is a, uh, oh, it's crashed. Help. Uh, it's not working anymore. <laughs> so I have to come out of here. Sorry. So I'm here now. Uh, no input? No input. Well, I will tell you about the project. In, so it's uh, in, in, uh, with, in the time that it's going to work again. This is a great project because uh, it started uh, one year ago at the Tech Fest in, uh, in Munich, Germany. And uh, 
and then had a lot of, uh, uh, we participated in a lot of events to develop uh, uh, the, this technology on and on. And it came to a point that uh, uh, we made it uh, work, actually. Oh. Help. Okay. So we made it work, and uh, that's the result of uh, this uh, making it work. For example, this is uh, the spectrum of a compact fluorescent, fluorescent light lamp that is uh, a mercury lamp. And uh, we can see that the, the split uh, uh, beam of this lamp uh, takes this form, has this color inside. So some bands in, in blue, some bands in, in, uh, in green, and in the red one. And uh, by taking this picture, simply the, the picture on the, on the computer, like the J JPEG file, and analyzing uh, the intensity of the pixels, you can actually get the spectra. And that's, a, a <laughs> that's as a nanometric precision. It's a device that is, it can be used uh, in a normal biology lab. So of course, that has the, the hardware has to be improved because it's wood. Actually, but it's, uh, it's working. It's possible to really make, uh, have this quality. So how, how do you build it then? Okay, you have to build a device that works in a lab and uh, you have to go for it. So I got inspired by already existing uh, spectrometers that were available. Yesterday there was the, spectral, the, the public lab uh, paper foldable spectrometer. It was downstairs and uh, we saw it uh, working. Uh, that was a project that was uh, run during the British Petroleum Oil Spill in the Gulf of Mexico, where uh, the people of public lab trained uh, all the citizens, the community, uh, to use a spectrometer to go and take sample of water and to call the authorities to clean up the, the oil in the water. So it was great. And Gaudi Labs is a, is a developer in uh, Switzerland, and we are working with him for several projects. And uh, that's uh, uh, another type of uh, spectro, spectrophotometer. And this is how does it look like. So it's exposed uh, even downstairs, and uh, you can come and see how does it work. Uh, it's perfect because uh, you can disassemble it. It's really, in five minutes, you have uh, assembled it when you have all the pieces. And it's perfect to explain the concept. So you see that the, the light coming from, he from here, and it works exactly like, uh, like this. The, the same principle, we have it here. We have here a diffracting grid that acts like a prism, and here there is a webcam. And so you can get your data directly into your computer, into your laptop. So it's clip clap. You don't even have sensoring. You don't even need to go through Ardi Arduino. It's usable for, from everybody. So people, biologists that works in a, in a lab, doesn't have a clue about software and hardware. And you have to deliver something that works. Yes, that's the problem because it's not working, this, this open source thing, because when you deliver it, you have to deliver to somebody who has no clue about what's behind it. So they don't know hardware, they don't know software, they just know the chemicals, they put it in, and it works. I'm a biologist, I did it like this for uh, years, <laughs> and now I had to build it on my own and go through the code, through the hardware, because there was no, no spectrometer that was designed for this purpose. The design is really important when you do something on, on open source, because it's, otherwise it will be wasted. Nobody will use it, and it's done for nothing. So you have to deliver like a, a finished product. And what's the application? That's the more interesting part of it, because uh, you actually can, uh, <laughs> can uh, do a lot. So science is, uh, is a really powerful uh, tool for uh, understanding what's around, uh, our health, and, uh, and everything. So we have here uh, three examples I will bring you. The risk of uh, artificial light. So I will go deeper in this topic later. Uh, it's like uh, with all these uh, energy saving lamps, we forgot to check if they are compatible with our skin and our circadian rhythm. But I will speak about that later. We can do chemistry and food analysis. So measure uh, the nutrients in our food, how nutrients our food and uh, 
if it's polluted, and uh, it's bring to a point that somebody is doing soil and water analysis. There is an Indian guy in Copenhagen that is working on top of that, and uh, at some point uh, we will come all together in the same uh, project because if uh, as long as it's, it's open source, uh, it's worth to to use it. There are places that yeah where there are the solution, the the, the problem, the issues, and uh, we bring together issues and solutions, and it's fantastic. So what about the health? How did you come here? So that was the, a study for the, from the EU committee uh, that was uh, about uh, how the artificial light affects us. And uh, they, were issued, they were issued about the UV uh, light, UV beam that this light emits. And uh, they, so they began a study for this reason. And uh, at the very end, uh, <laughs> they they come out uh, with uh, with the point that uh, we are normally exposed to UV light, so from the sun, and that's the main source. And uh, the effect on the skin and on the eyes were not that uh, uh, in relation to the to the sun. It was uh, it was negligible, so you don't get the skin cancer from the lights uh, inside, but from the sun. So. It's, is not negligible. Okay, I will. <laughs> and but uh, it will disrupt your circadian rit rhythm that came out. So you won't be able to sleep uh, that well if you if you are exposed to this light uh, before sleeping. And uh, overall, they are deep deepening it, and it's more the blue light that is giving issue. So the the LEDs, the old LEDs, these white, uh, these cool white LEDs are giving issues and. Uh, we are switching to, they are switching now to warm white that is, uh, is lacking of blue and it's more healthy and it's, it's for the mood. Yes, it's kind of, the mood is goes bad and then you go depressed and uh, whatever. So the biochemistry and the pigment analysis, that's what we did uh, in the Berlin Science Act Day. And uh, we had a, a basic working spectrophotometer and uh, you already see that uh, the sunlight has a complete spectrum the saffron is, uh, has, a, has an enhanced uh, yellow and red, so that's the, the other colors are, are absorbed. So what we see, it's what uh, comes through, and what we don't see, it's what's absorbed by this pigment. So chlorophyll, uh, you see a lot of green, and uh, low, red and broad, low red and blue, so it's, you, it, it works. And that was a basic version. Now that uh, the, the one that is uh, downstairs is, uh, is improved, and uh, we will do. There is a uh, biochemistry happening. Uh, we have a, I have extracted from spinach some pigments, and later we will check uh, if it works uh, and the precision. Here is the yes. How do you set up? Uh, how do you make the setup for the extraction? It's uh, acetone, alcohol, basically uh, jars. And uh, for uh, you can even isolate the pigments by paper chromatography. By you use this blotting paper that is the, the paper that kids use for uh, cleaning the ink uh, on the on the paper when they write. And uh, let's say you dip it into the into the solvent, and the solvent runs uh, up above the, the paper, bringing it with it uh, the whole pigments. And uh, depending on the chemical physical properties of the pigments, they get separated. Then you cut it, you cut the paper <laughs> when you have isolated, you resuspend them and you can analyze them. And it's something great. And uh, what's coming next? So we have, uh, yes, we are going on with the, uh, with the analysis. A colleague of mine, Kat Austin, uh, managed to uh, make a protocol for the extraction uh, of lycopene in tomato, that is the, the red, and polyphenols uh, from grapes. And uh, it's, uh, yes, you can do actually extraction, then uh, you can do analysis, whatever you want, like in a chemi chemistry or bio lab. And uh, that's it, uh, yeah, that's the, uh, it's a really powerful tool. Then uh, you can do, yes, we are going to take contact uh, for the soil and the water analysis. We are, I have already contacts for, uh, from, for doing uh, a project about uh, endocrine disruption that is done by the Alliance in Green, that are, is, is a group, international group of people who are doing uh, 
endocrine disruption. That is when uh, chemicals that are in the environment that where we live in. So it's not just the environment, water or uh, or food, but it's even the the objects that, that we use. So bottles, uh, plastics. Uh, that's environment, and they can interfere with your uh, hormonal uh, uh, status. And uh, yes, and do bad stuff to your body, so get get you sick. And uh, moreover, the the the, the more the most difficult thing, and the, the reason f because I'm here, is to establish collaboration uh, between uh, groups in different parts of the world. So we are based. I'm based in Berlin. We are collaborating strongly with a group in uh, Heidelberg. It is in the south of Germany. Then uh, with this girl who is in Boston, and uh, another guy who is in San Francisco. And uh, yes, there are. Oh, maybe Singapore as well. <laughs> yeah, I can hear Singapore. May I, the plan is to leave here the spectrometer to somebody who wants to. There were some girls who were, were interested in do-it-yourself biology. So I'm to open a space or to some kind of hacker space and to run something together. And uh, yes, we have an ACPAD and, and uh, we uh, have, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I already, I just set, set it up, but uh, I will dispatch the news uh, on this, <laughs> on Twitter and the ACPAD is used for the uh, uploaded documentation, but we are uh, as well in the Hacteria ne network, so it's, for this reason, we need a platform for uh, do-it-yourself science, where uh, where we can really upload uh, and uh, uh, this upload the status of a project, uh, uh, open the the results, uh, and having everything comparable. And uh, yes, downstairs there is uh, everything to see if you are curious to see it. So uh, the real spectrum, spectrophotometer uses a halogen lamp plus uh, the uh, diethylene lamp for the UV. So to get a continuum spectrum um, in a do-it-yourself environment, it's harder because with a halogen lamp, you're lacking the blue. But uh, you can use tungsten, tungsten lamps. They, are, they, go, they work pretty well. They have a continuum. Sorry, uh, we are running out of time, actually. Okay, can I answer? Uh, if you have some questions, yeah. maybe, uh, can Sorry, the, uh, it's just a quick, quick question. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, two, two small questions. Have, have you uh, done an analysis on dust? Uh, dust is a major problem here if you don't want to even shut in a room like this. So if you leave everything open, you have fresh air, mm -hmm. but you have you invite a lot of dust in, mm -hmm. and, and it contains particles and all kinds of stuff that uh, so you see from that what kind of uh, you know, uh, wave spectrum yeah. that can divide uh, the contents in the dust. That's one thing. The second thing, uh, since you are European and you are in Europe, so wine is everywhere, have you done the reverse engineering of wine? Wine? Ah, uh, so, uh, so actually. So you derive the species of grapes uh, not according to later, Okay. But the, the, not even talking about the content of alcohol and all that, but it's talking about the pollutants in the grapes. It's like mm -hmm. you are in Italy, so like virgin oil, so extra virgin. Yeah. They don't have wine. Sorry, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, all right. Sorry. Sorry. So wine is only matters okay. whether you can drink. Uh, I'm I'm coming to, to answer to you yeah. personally. So.